To fully understand what this setup looks like, I went ahead and I actually bought a uh, Predator 420 engine. That way I could make this not uh, stuck inside of a mini excavator. So what we have here, we got a couple different components and I'm gonna talk about each one. So this bracket and this upper turnbuckle is actually from like a cheap Amazon alternator uh, mount setup. I think it was like $12. So what I've done here is I've used this bracket as, as a way to, to come up with a mount for the top of the alternator because there's really nothing to bolt to. You know, we have the exhaust, the fuel tank, and the, really the closest thing is these two studs, but they don't have the correct geometry to allow a tensioner rod to get in here. So what I ended up doing is I, I had this adjustable turnbuckle off Amazon and these come in all sorts of different lengths. All you gotta do is just get a quick measurement of you know, what's gonna make sense on your machine. So I use this to kind of, as this pushes up, it leans the turnbuckle over and it drives the belt tension out that way. So that's the setup that I felt was most appropriate. Beyond that, this is a standard uh, GM one wire alternator, nothing special at all. And what we're doing here is basically we got the drive belt for the alternator running inside this new gap that we created with these spacers and it's going down to that pulley mounted on the crankshaft. Now, if you go to do something like this in your own machine, the belt that you use is going to really be dependent on the exact pulley and alternator configuration you have. It's somewhere around 21 to 22 inches. This is a 22 inch belt and it is extremely tight, um, but it's also wider than this pulley is. I don't know if you can, you can kind of see that. It sits up on top, so I feel like a, an appropriate uh, 3 8 drive belt is going to sit down a little more, and I think maybe a 22 on a 3 8 would be just about perfect. So this would be what the finished product looks like, all right? So as you can see in here, we have our, we have our drive pulley in there. And we got the belt running up, and it's going to be able to spin that alternator and power the AC on the machine. As I said before, belt tension is handled by an adjustment up on this or an adjustment out on this. And it's going to cause the alternator, if you look at kind of how it's mounted, it's going to cause the alternator to tension the belt fully. And then if you kept on going, obviously it would, you know, fall to the other side. Uh, but the key is here, we can't, we can't go past the starter. All right. Now this is the electric start box, but our machines don't have that. So really the firewall, the machines kind of all run right here. So we have to make sure we keep this alternator on this side of its, its halfway point, if you will. All right. So this is the best that I could come up with without cutting uh, the, the pump adapter and without messing too much stuff up, um, you just have to be careful. I'm trying to get a good shot at it. So as you can see, the belt runs right by this mount for the bottom of the alternator. And it's also the, the bolt that goes through over the top of the pump housing. So when you tension the belt, you have to make sure you bring the alternator over enough so that you clear that bolt with the belt and that this side of the belt does not hit this mounting bolt all right other than that it should pretty much be good to go and i think this is probably the best way to guarantee that you have enough amperage to charge your ac